Uh, good evening, guys. Kenna Tortoise Capital, Nightly Strategy Podcast, November 24th, 2023, day after Thanksgiving. I just wanted to just share a, uh, just a note. This is, this is a uh, two-year chart, monthly charts, just to show you, you know, the argument lately for uh, swing trading. Um, two years ago, the market was at this price level. At the end of October, the market two years later was net zero. And now it's up about 8%. And that all happens on the basis of one pretty amazing uh, two-week period, an extraordinary move that took us from the depths of threatening to crack 400 and to come all the way back down to here. And instead, uh, got all the way to the hump of the dragon in 13 days. So if you were the kind of person that just said, hey, this is all dead money. This is two years of net zero. Said, I'm just getting out of this crap. Then you miss, you miss all that, which has made this actually a slightly above average year um, when you check the uh, annual performances of the S&P. So there's something really important about uh, short-term volatility when you're talking about less than quarterly rebalancing or more frequent than quarterly rebalancing. Uh, these short-term volatility spikes uh, are really significant. And if you know what the size of those moves are, look look how large those monthly moves are. And look how extreme, here's one that opened here, sold all the way off to here and then closed, opened here and then closed all the way up here. So you're getting some extraordinary monthly moves. Like this is a monthly move here all the way down to here and then from here all the way up to there. Those monthly moves are really extraordinary, which means that swing trades uh, have an opportunity to add value or really crush you if you're not doing them right. Uh, this last little move that took it from here all the way up to here uh, was enough to take what had been becoming a, some, uh, a spring and was below the Bollinger Band mean which is kind of a rare event. I mean, this was the last time it was, this was the price action below the, the Bollinger Band mean. Otherwise, this has been just pure bear, or pure, pure bull, I should say. Um, this was threatening to become another one of these. Um, and you would not have been crazy if you said, well, the craziness of politics in the U.S. plus war plus a complete change in the lineup of geopolitics in Europe. You know, the sleepy man of Europe is now featuring some long-term neutral countries like Sweden taking a position um, in a land dominated by nukes. And, and um, who, who saw that coming? So you would not have been crazy if you said, hey, the combination of politics and war uh, could have made this thing go like that. Instead, you get this. Astonishing. At the same time, trade, uh, treasuries getting cratered. And U.S. real estate going from 1% mortgages back up to 7% mortgages and destroying the flipping market. I mean, hmm. Inter may you live in interesting times. Uh, so let's take, let's shift back to the, um, to the hybrid swing, 30-minute um, charts. Uh, not a lot of trading today because of the um, shortened session and holiday spirit and whatnot. So no trade in Alcoa. 
Um, tried a short one, two, three, and AI got a little taste of it right here. Uh, half an hour. Amazon, no trade. Although that was a that was a uh, really tradable move on the three minutes. I missed that one. Caterpillar. Uh, no trade. Cliff. Uh, also no trade. Chevron. That Chevron. CVS. I'm going to call that Chevron all the time for some reason. Um, this was yesterday's really nice trade. It just topped out today. Uh, there was contentment and neglect was sort of the watchwords of the day. Um, this was a minor run up in um, in Disney, uh, which has had an extraordinary move um, on a swing basis. I mean, you talk about something that's gone from neglect to joy. Um, if we just look at the uh, at, at the regression lines on this one, uh, this thing went from 115, you know, at the peak, one, two, three in a slide, and when you get the 90 270 crossover and then the break, uh, almost the break of the RL 270, that's where it finally found support. Uh, and then you get the crossover here of the RL30 crossing the through the neutral zone. And now the 90 confirming that. And you get quite an extraordinary move in Disney. And that move's not over yet. Like it's got to get to about 103 before it really tests this. So there's still, uh, there's still about 5% of potential. Uh, in that move to there. And then if it breaks through this, then who's going to say it's not going to get to 113, which is another plus 10%. So Disney to me is um, is one to watch. Uh, it's not tech, it's entertainment, it's domestic, it's a super large cap. And it talks a little bit about the willingness of the consumer to spend uh, on uh, luxury items and whatnot. Um, so this was a, an important turning point that broke, broke that trend and um, was enough to get the RL270 to get ready to come through its own little neutral zone. The 90s there, all we need now is to see um, the RL270 to continue to make that run and get across, get across this neutral zone which is this, um, that gray ribbon. And that, that broke this little sidewinder here and has given the first clear indication of upside potential. So Disney has been on quite a move. And that's an example there from 85 to 96, uh, you know, a, an 11% move. Uh, in about 10 days. If you're not a swing trader, you'll never catch those in time. All right, shifting back to uh, 30 minutes. And let's get Dish up here. Uh, no trade and dish. Devon Energy. Why is it so slow today? Uh, no trade. Electronic Arts. Tried a little one, two, three in the morning for a fraction. Emerging Markets. Trade, Ethereum, no trade, 
Mexico, Brazil, nothing. Uh, Intel, no trade. Although I like that hook at the end of the day. Um, that feels like some posturing for next week and a resumption of tech, so let's stay alert for that one. Uh, international paper, no trade, miss the morning move. Uh, real estate closed very well. Coke. Uh, Coke was a continuation of the uh, Emerging Dragon three days ago, and it just kind of continued to grind. So we're actually in pretty good shape. I should really drag that over and see. Uh, we're still working that one. Uh, no trade on the regional banks. Uh, just missed this move in um, Mattel. Um, missed it yesterday. Missed the continuation today. That's just uh, mental tiredness, I think. McDonald's, now we're about five days into that one from 276. Uh, and that's continuing to grind. So, you know, that IP, Disney, Coke, those are all... Those non-tech guys are all looking pretty good. Um, I ventured into the uh, Kata 2 here on uh, Microsoft. I'm expecting tech to resume next week. Um, a failure to fail this week. Uh, and I wanted to get uh, that entry at the Bollinger Band mean. Um, marijuana, no trade, NVIDIA. Uh, the bottom fell out of that one these last two days. I'm a little surprised that I wasn't prepared for it didn't trade it um, I think we're gonna see that uh, as an opportunity to get long next week clean energy nothing Rivian uh, ventured into that as it crossed the Bollinger Band mean gave me a cot of two held my nose and bought it it's holding about half an hour uh, Tesla Tried the Kata 2 and uh, just didn't want to hold it over the weekend um, for a scratch. Walmart missed the um, Kata 2 entry. And U.S. still just missed that heck out of that for the last two days. So not much trading going on for me today. Um, but um, being prepared for next week. Uh, I did take some three minutes, however. Um, uh, when I, I'm doing opportunity trading, I prefer that. Uh, this is uh, Rivian. Uh, so this is the, this is like an OR3 short and um, fractional gain. Stopped and reversed at the, um, at like a delayed entry at the uh, PSAR flip. Picked up an R and then another R on the Kata 2 continuation. Um, this is um, Ethereum. Gap and go. Standard exit at the um, skin of the dragon. And I think that was all I did on that one. So 2R for that. And then uh, Disney. OR3. And because of the move that it's made, you know, I was in, I, w I was ready for this one. And the OR3 was so large, and then the follow-through was big, uh, and it gave us about 3R in the morning. So 6 or 7R collected on the, in the, that morning session. And then no trading in the afternoon as traders. And myself just going home and trying to keep it quiet. So, uh... Tactical traders, again, have been rewarded throughout this. When we look at the weekend reports, we're going to see that um, in a couple different ways. So volatility is still favoring short, sharp moves. The ETF2 model is almost fully invested. Uh, we've got strength across the board, and it even went into bullish quiet because of the tiny little ranges this week. Um, that's the extraordinary move in November from basically 410 all the way up to 455, just a 10% move like a rocket ship. Um, but here's the real test. You know, the last time it was there, it just kind of grudgingly gave back in three waves. So we'll see. 
Um, the three day, pretty strong. And the nine day, very strong. Nine day actually broke above the RL10. So that's a vote to the upside. Um, pretty quiet week altogether. So um, uh, the Qs and Brazil kind of dominating, um, grinding this week. And again, old school tech XLK outperforming the Qs. So the S&P tech has been better. Um, you see the, uh, the tech sector head and shoulders above everything else. Finance in the second place. In terms of liquidity, um, just a handful stick out here in the green for shorter term trading, biotechs, uh, regional banks, gold miners, and oil and gas exploration. Reach up to um, the Dow Tactical. Uh, some breakouts to the upside on low volume with Disney. Home Di That's how strong Disney has been. Uh, and, and the recovery in United Health as well. Um, Travelers is a pretty strong day. Uh, in the ETFs, um, a few breakouts, notably uh, the Dow and uh, EFA. You know, quite a remarkable bounce for the Euro Asia blend. Uh, Cisco. 11 to 1, Walmart 9 to 1. So the weekend warriors putting together the swing trade frames. Those are two definitely, two anomalies that you definitely want to get a hold of. And even Intel at 1.8, I think, is, uh, is intriguing. Uh, summer dominating, no surprise there. Uh, broad strength everywhere. Just a few things showing weakness. Apple and uh, treasuries. And again, you can see the, in terms of volatility, again, this is the point I've made before. Just want to reiterate. The size of the, of the volatility pre-COVID mm -hmm. never gets out of plus or minus one on the long-term basis. And yet after COVID, you get uh, large moves out of uh, greater than plus or minus one. So, and then the speed at which this is iterating, it's, it's not just the amplitude is the frequency that it's, it's going from, you know, plus one and a half to minus two in short periods of time. So that's creating the opportunities for big swings, um, that are, uh, definitely swing tradable. This little decay in the RL10 uh, has just brought it back into quietude. And the RL30 is still looking strong. And the RL90 has bottomed out and is now coming back into the normal range. So there's a lot of room for that to grow in here. And so we could definitely see that get all the way up to plus three. That would not be impossible. And the test is coming like right here. You know, it's got to get above 460. If it gets above 460, then this is all fireworks, smoke, and mirrors. Hooray. But failure here gets you back to the middle of the dragon first at about 430. Leg one, and then leg two to the bottom of the dragon, in which case would be right back into this nightmare. So a perfect compound critical state. And if you're a true believer in the long side, you can find all kinds of reasons why it should break out above this. 
And if you're a true believer in the downside, you can find all kinds of reasons to support that kind of move. And that's what makes it a game. Makes it fun. Maybe that's all there is. Yep, I guess that's all we have. All right, that's everything I want to cover today. Uh, we'll get this published and posted and uh, catch you uh, in the morning for True Storytelling and uh, Sunday for the um, Creativity and uh, Foundations Q&A, guys. So enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend and uh, take good care.